I take the next speaker, who is in the order of our uh, Pierre Jacquet. So, Pierre, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Claude. Um, let me uh, focus on another pathology of the international financial system, which actually creates a bridge between what Bertrand and others say, that there is a lack of money going to developing countries right now, and the fact that uh, a few years ago there was a lot of money going to developing countries. And the bridge is called debt. And I think that uh, this, uh, this pathology of the international uh, system is the uh, risk of emergence of a new debt crisis with considerable impact, especially for countries in Africa, but not, not only. And the situation is a bit similar to the uh, 1980s. We had an influx of money uh, into these countries and that corresponded to the recycling of excess liquidity in rich countries in search of higher potential returns. And then we had a number of shocks. And of course, the shocks are COVID, the slowdown, uh, the economic slowdown in developed countries, inflation, uh, rising uncertainty, the drying up of new funds, depreciation of currency, uh, currencies against the dollar, and so on. So as a result, the burden of the debt service which is still lower than historical records, has significantly, significantly increased, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, again, not only, and in Latin America. Um, let me also mention the net transfers to IDA countries, that is, the net financing inflows minus the debt service, have turned negative uh, in the face of needs to, and, and, and that happens in the face of rising needs to engage uh, into strategies of green growth strategies, to fund the energy transition, to reach the SDGs, and, and, and so on. Right now, about 30 countries or more are considered to be in a high risk of debt distress. Second point, there are three differences with the earlier debt problems. One is that the much of this debt is now held by the private sector. Private sector and multilateral institutions, but the big new thing is the private sector, all of the private sector. And that has been a major tendency in the evolution of debt. And I'll come back later to the implications of that. The second, which is linked to it, this much of it, is a shift from loans to bonds. With uh, uh, an interesting fact, which is bonds do not carry the same risk of systemic event than loans. And therefore, when there is a problem, the incentives to act is even lower. And then we all know that the incentives to solve debt problems has always been quite weak. It's even weaker when you have bonds because bonds are a private thing, not, not, not a, a collective issue. So that's, that's one of the difficulties. And the third difference is the considerable uh, rise in non-DAC creditors, especially China. In Sub-Saharan Africa, China now holds close to 60% of bilateral public and publicly guaranteed debt. And China has become the first bilateral creditor of developing countries. The implications are mounting obstacles to prompt an effective resolution of debt crisis. And we see that every day we take commitments, we have new, nice frameworks, but implementing those frameworks has become increasingly uh, difficult. Uh, so ineffective crisis uh, resolution. My third and final point is that we are again addressing this debt issue in a crisis resolution mode. As I, agree, as I said, as I argued, this crisis resolution mode is not effective. It's very slow. But again, we are doing what we did in the past. We have a crisis. We try to solve it. It takes too long, but in the end, we will do something. I think it is time to move to more crisis anticipation. It's not really prevention, but the idea that we should prepare for the next crisis. This is the nature of capitalist financial flows. The excesses followed by excessive disillusion. It's always been the case, and we have not been able to integrate that in 
the approaches, strategies, and instruments. So I would suggest that there needs to be more thinking about how to make ex ante debt restructuring mechanism more automatic. Um, it is complex. Uh, it uh, requires to distinguish between proper and improper use of borrowed funds. It uh, requires to distinguish between liquidity crisis and solvency crisis. But I think the risk, the risk of debt distress in the face uh, of exo exogenous shocks need to be endogenized. There are, I think, many ways to do it. One is to go back to the proposal made by Anne Kruger a long time ago to create a debt restructuring, a sovereign debt restructuring mechanism, the SDRM, which never floated very far, but I think it's a very important idea and suggestion. It could be uh, endogenized in debt contract. It could be also uh, endogenized through uh, contingent debt instruments. And I think that's one aspect of financial innovation that could be quite promising. So my point is that the time has come to spend energy on a more lasting debt management framework, which is today, today really lacking. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Pierre. You're absolutely right in mentioning the fact that uh, China is not members of the Paris Club and that as far as governments are concerned, it's an enormous uh, hole in the system. And uh, I, I cannot uh, resist uh, to hope that uh, China will understand at a certain moment that it is time to join some kind of, uh, I would say, global mechanism. I'm a little bit more skeptical on Anne Kruger's proposal, but we will discuss that.